Artemers, I hope you guys are so well. Welcome back to the second installment of Ask Artem Anything. Do, 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 do. For those of you who are watching for the first time, hello. I am so happy that you are here. My name is Alex and welcome to Ask Artem Anything Artem Alexandro style. I'm a philosopher as well as a professional in advertising and public relations. I have a bachelor's degree in both of them, which is pretty cool. Not sure what else to say other than I have lots of plants and I watch lots of movies. I've got Stay Tuned on mute right now. It's a banger if you haven't watched it before. And then I love music as well. My Spotify has like 90 playlists on it. So if you guys want to ask me anything at all, feel free. I'd be very, very happy to answer any single question that you have. Today we are going to be talking about a very classic situation, the trolley problem. So from my last video, Sam, thank you so, so much for asking me about this. I'm very excited to get into it. Because the trolley problem is such a freaking classic, I thought it would be really fun to just watch a YouTube video on it. Alright, so this 1 minute and 38 second video is the one that one of my professors showed in class, so I think it is a perfect example that we shall show here today. A runaway train is heading towards five workers on a railway line. There's no way of warning them, but you're standing near a lever that operates some points. Switch the points and the train goes down a spur. Trouble is, there's another worker on that bit of track too, but it's one fatality instead of five. Should you do that? Many people think the right thing to do would be to switch the points, to sacrifice one to save five, since that produces the best outcome possible. Now imagine the train heading for the workers again. This time it can only be stopped by pushing a very large man off a bridge. His great bulk would stop the train, but he'd die. Should you do that? Most people say no. But why not? Both thought experiments are cases of sacrificing one to save five. What the trolley problem examines is whether moral decisions are simply about outcomes or about the manner in which you achieve them. Some utilitarians argue that the two cases are not importantly different from each other. Both have similar consequences, and consequences are all that really matter. In each case, one person dies and five are saved, the best option in each harrowing situation. But lots of people say they would switch the points, but they wouldn't push the man off the bridge. Are they simply inconsistent, or are they on to something? Or are they onto something? Um, so that is a very interesting question there, which is not the one that we were asked particularly, but it might be fun to answer that one as well. What we were asked from our last video. So Sam, thank you so, so, so much. Again, if I haven't thanked you before, um, thank you for the first time. I was so excited when I saw your comment. You have no idea. I was about ready to go and brush my teeth. And then I checked my video to see if it had any comments. And whoop-bam, there you were. Uh, so you made my day. I made it to the end, so crickets emoji, rock emoji, cause you rock, you know what's up. A live stream of answering questions would be cool. I thought so too. But again, it's terrifying, right? My questions are, what would you do if you were the driver in the trolley problem? Save one person versus a couple people and why? And. What do you have for future, for the future, since graduating, YouTube, dream job, fields of interest? So, second awesome follow-up question, or, er, awesome second follow-up, you know what I'm saying. 
So, as I said before, this is a super classic problem. And as Sam mentioned, I am graduated. So it's been a very long time since I've talked about it. I'm very excited to do so. I gotta draw a little train first, of course. What exactly do trains look like? All I can think of is Thomas the Engine. This is a bit of a complex situation. Uh, this guy might be way too big, perspective-wise. Um, but over on the other side of the tracks, we have our, like, five worker bras. Okay, so I have drawn out our situation. Um, hopefully I will have time within the next week to actually finish drawing it, because I would... that would be fun. <laughs> so what is very interesting about the wording of Sam's question is if, if I were the driver, and in which case i feel like that is the the driver of the train situation i'm not sure if if i can do anything if i am the driver of the train <laughs> i'm not sure if they can switch the train tracks from and i don't know if if trains can do that so in which case if i were the train i would just feel very bad Okay, so I kind of drew the problem backwards. The people are supposed to be over here, and the one person is supposed to be over here. But what is really funny about the video is one of the little guys, he has a, a pop-up and it's like, I can't yell because sound hasn't been invented yet, to which was my first thought in going into this. It's just like, just shout. Just shout at them real quick. Easy peasy. But you, you can't, apparently. You're, you're standing here completely unable to shout. So what, what do you do? What, what does one do? This case scenario can be applied to a number of other things, and that is why it has been used so heavily throughout ethics courses throughout all of time. So the real meat of this question is, would you save one person or five? But I like to look at the details a little closer. The classic problem says the five people work on the train tracks. They're working on the train tracks. And so to a degree, they are probably paid hazard pay that if the train was coming at them, they are more prepared and aware of the possibility of than a passerby, just a civilian on the streets, just a little pedestrian. So they're probably not aware of this probably being able to happen if you saw a train was about to hit five people, you would probably assume that one person is less than five people. And this is basically the most humane way that everyone has come to answer this question. But what is very interesting is what I said. Those five people are more prepared to die via train than a pedestrian. So that that's just my um my my two cents about it. A much more complicated situation that we could look at is something like what I have accidentally drawn here. Um totally influenced by the movie, stay tuned if you haven't seen it. There is some train action 
in it, so it's a classic. But if the only way to fix the situation is by switching the lever in moving the tracks one way or another, what would you do in a situation where a train was coming straight barreling towards, say, your loved one? Or, you know, just a random human to make it easier to say no or yes. Would you risk your freaking life to untie their rope in which they have been tied to the tracks by some evil doer and the only way to fix the situation very easily via the trolley problem would be to hit five workers instead. So you can either risk your own life in untying rope, possibly not making it. Oh my gosh, here's the train scene. Oh, my train's so not cute in comparison. But it's too ironic, I was just talking about it. Anyways, would you risk your life in the benevolent fashion of untying someone's ropes and letting them free of a death by train? Or would you not risk your own life and kill five workers instead? I think in the words of My Hero Academia, you are a hero if you do what no one else would do and that no one has asked of you. In the case of that person being your loved one, I think that, like, you know, that is already ob obligated toward you. So in the very deontological sense, you, you have to save their life and risk your own. If that is your child, you will swoop down and like no questions asked, like you will just feel the obligation emerging from your being. So this is why I love the trolley problem. You can take it in all sort of situations. The reason why utilitarians say that you ought to kill <laughs> uh, five people, no, wait, no, no, <laughs> one person instead of five people is because of simple math. This is why I semi am not utilitarianistic because it is a little cut and dry for my taste, but in looking at the simple math, five people is more than one person. What is a little semi anti 2020 PC? about the trolley problem is you're talking about killing people. <laughs> like, realistically, that's what we're talking about here, which is awkward in a sense. But that's okay. I, you know, it, it is exercising your moral values and what you think about and how you reach out and look into the world, like how you judge others potentially too. Like if a company does something terrible for the good of one versus the good of the many, like happens all the time, then you can definitely judge that and say, hmm, they, they probably do the tro trolley problem wrong, huh? Realistically, it is just like an awesome metaphor of looking at the good of the many and living in the societal life of the social contract in which the good of the many is better than the good of the few. And I would definitely agree, but as a philosopher, you can take it in so many directions, like, but what if the few are the minority and the minority is not doing so hot right now? I don't know, man. There's, there's so many ways to go about it. I'm not sure how long I've talked about the problem, the trolley problem. It is such a freaking classic. I feel like I could talk about it forever. The problem that the video 
said like would you push someone in front of the train to stop killing either groups of people but it would kill the person you push is kind of complicated uh but i think it'd be fun to talk about for a second the reason why this like very very odd situation that the video proposes is interesting as well as odd is because you are literally physically pushing someone in front of the train to stop them the video specifically says a large enough person to stop the train to which is sizest and not particularly appropriate anyways so would you push someone versus would you kill one person who happened to be you know the civilian on the one track the reason why these two are so freaking different is because you are physically pushing a person in front of a train who wasn't there before the other person happened to be there and in my opinion have more of a chance to get out of their own damn way than five whole people. Five people, they might be much, much more distracted in the case of they're working and probably hear trains all the time. So would you purposefully murder someone to save six people? No, because that person does not have a chance of surviving whatsoever and even if you couldn't push them, you are now not that person's friend. Or you might just get pushed your your own damn self. I'm just just swearing. It's it's about killing, guys. It's just wrong no matter what. I kind of want to look at Isaac Asimov's rules of robotics real quick. The reason why Isaac Asimov's rules of robotics come to mind is because of the word in action a robot must not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm a robot must obey the orders given it by human beings except where such orders conflict with the first law a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law so in using the rules of robotics by Isaac Asimov, we can tell from that the trolley problem, if one has to switch the track at all from five people to one person, a robot in this universe would have to act because they cannot inact in saving humans from harm. In this case, they would have to switch the track from five people to one person but as we have all seen uh i robot they would probably be able to swoop in and save the second person or the first person the one person so i believe a robot in this universe would sacrifice its own life if a human were in danger just because it says as long as such protection does not conflict with the first and second law. So if there was a human in danger, they would have to sacrifice themselves, just like the deontological obligation of saving others, like I said before. Um, so they wouldn't harm themselves for no reason, is pretty much what the third law is. But if someone were to tell them to save the situation at hand, and they didn't think to go and run and save the one person after switching the track to the one person from five people, they might have a total freaking meltdown. Through the second law, they would go completely mad because they can't just harm one person versus five people because they're harming a person. It, it conflicts with the first law. They would go one person is n is equal to five people obviously that's just my idea here um i'm not isaac asimov unfortunately if you guys have an idea as to what a robot would do in the trolley problem 
in the universe of Isaac Asimov. I would absolutely love to hear about it. I'm actually three chapters away from finishing iRobot, so I'm really, really excited too. Not sponsored, but it's on Audible. Just a little sidebar between questions. Um, I'm gonna get to it. the last one we have from Sam. What plans do you have for the future since graduating? YouTube, dream job, field of interest. So this is a very interesting question. I'm not sure how to say anything about anything with that particularly. No, honestly, I really enjoy making YouTube videos a lot. I have a job in research and development in public relations, and it's super awesome. Um, in moving on into, like, plans, uh, I'm pretty good for right now. I just went to school for, like, evers, um, so even, like, trying to have a YouTube schedule is like I'm finally doing it dude um so like plans YouTube schedule like that's enacted it's not future really but just being better at being a YouTuber I guess is, is just it's really the, the answer to that question um fields of interest I I think it'd be awesome to learn a lot another language even though I'm not like fluent in French. Um, I really want to get into like Japanese or German. Um, watch anime in Japanese. I'm a sucker for anime. What can I say? Anyways, I love German because of... Doo -doo. Literally a two-in-one. Nietzsche and Heidegger, they both are German and write in German originally. It would be super duper awesome to read their original works and then i absolutely love the band tokyo hotel i have since like 2008 i don't know and tokyo hotel they do music in german like all the time still which i think is super awesome they do english songs but stick with what you want to do man you do you you know me um so it'd just be cool to know what they're singing without looking up the lyrics other fields of interest. I have a dog. His name is Charlie. Uh, he's a little Shih Tzu poodle. I just took him for his senior vet exam. He's 11. He'll be 12 in December. Um, it was like four freaking hundred dollars uh, for like vaccinations and stuff. But I love him either way. I just, you know, I don't like to spend money. That's me personally fields of interest hoarding money my boyfriend calls me a dragon because of that sometimes uh but if you're looking to get a dog at any point in time know that they are a bit expensive um if you want to give them like the full treatments uh because i have a shih tzu poodle he needs lots and lots of haircuts all the time just it grows as fast as mine i swear but yeah, there's not much else I do besides like arts and crafts and TVs and cuddles with my puppy, you know? What else is life? If you guys would love to share your fields of interest, maybe we got a little Venn diagram and share a lot more than I'm listing. Okay, so this has been a super duper duper awesome second freaking episode of the Ask Artem series. I'm really excited about this new one. I didn't mention it before, but it's like totally unscripted. I'm just going from your questions to the camera with as little forethought as possible because <laughs> I think it'd be really chill and relax and that's like the exercise brain power of a philosopher, I think, because when you're researching and all that jazz, sometimes it can get really boring and all you really want to do is talk to your friends. So I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts about the Charlie problem and we'll talk about it in the comments. It'll be a great time. If you guys have any questions, any at all, please throw them down in the comments or hit me up on the socials on Twitter or Instagram. I don't really use Facebook. Anyways, please do. It would be super duper lovely. I would love to answer your question any shape or form. What was I gonna say? I totally lost it. I, 
I don't remember. It's getting really hot in here. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that. You guys have a great rest of your night or day or morning or whatever. The um, thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end here. Just like Sam, freaking, if you made it to the end, you rock. Put a freaking rock emoji. So classic. And I'll see you on the next one. Sorry if I'm red in the face, like I said. It's hot. Okay. Go eat your dinner, and I love you. Bye. P.S. It's like it's a freaking 1.38 in the morning, and I drank coffee to make, uh, make a video so I'd have more energy for you guys, so, um, wish me luck on sleeping. <laughs> okay, bye, love y'all.